It's rude to keep people waiting. This girl, she's got something she wants to ask. What girl? Are you talking about that shadow? Yep, and guess what? It's someone you know. Okay, you can come out. <sighs> Yule. There are people here. They want to see you. lend a helping hand, but you're too far. Even though they know what you're really feeling, what you need, they can't do anything for you. I'm not looking for help from anybody. Of course you aren't. You're God's handpicked savior, right? You don't need friends, or even family. That's why you can't find Sarah anymore. <sighs> Whatever. Listen, you are the savior. You must gather the souls that still walk upon this dying world, and lead them to a new world of salvation. But, your sister's soul is invisible to you, and if you cannot see her, you cannot save her. You must ask yourself, if it means saving Sarah, will you fight God? One human does not have the power to defeat Benevelza. He is all-powerful. Then I'll find another power. Something beyond me, whatever it takes, even if it kills me as well. You cannot save anyone. Not even Sarah. Not as you are. Because first, you have to save yourself. You should listen to her. She always tells the truth. Right. Not like you. But... She's telling me that I'm missing something. Well, yeah. Haven't you figured it out? Ugh. I swear, sometimes I lose my faith in you. You don't even know the first thing about your own soul, but you think you can fight God himself. I don't think I've ever met anyone so dense! If you know it all, then tell me. What is it I'm missing? <sighs> it doesn't work like that. It doesn't mean a thing if you can't figure it out on your own. I have to save myself. But how? I said I'm fine. Now just drop it, all right? If you're sure. But you will tell me if something is wrong, won't you, Light?
a cure. I don't believe it. <laughs> you actually got everything. Now I'll finally be able to do my final task. Words cannot express just how much this means to me. <laughs> Truly. But I want to say thank you anyway. So, that was your last task, to make this medicine. Yes, I want to give it to someone, but I'll have to be extra careful with this brew. I can't ruin this, not something this precious. That's right. Don't you go wasting all of my hard work. I'll take that as encouragement, I guess. I'll bet every last bit of pride I have as an apothecary on this. anymore. I need Cardesia's elixir. He said something about Cardesia that sounds like a woman's name. Cardesia. I know her. That's the apothecary in Yogged Village. Welcome. Do you need a cure? I ran across a man in Polta who was calling out your name. He seemed ill. I don't suppose you know him. What? You... you ran into Taylor? He was in a bad state, wasn't he? Remember the medicine I had you gather ingredients for? I didn't tell you, but it's for him. You haven't given it to him? Not yet, but I have a reason. You see, the problem with this medicine is that it only works immediately after it's been concocted. I thought of heading to Polta with the ingredients and brewing it there, but unfortunately the village doesn't have the facilities or equipment I need. So you're saying that you can only make it here, but at the same time he needs to take it soon after it's made. If you want, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. I might make it in time on my chocobo. What? You would do that for me? I can't promise I'll get there fast enough, but if you're willing to try, so am I. Can you mix up a batch now? Of course I can. If you'll just give me a minute, I'll prepare some right away. I'll bet my reputation that I can fix that curse. Curse? I thought he had some kind of illness. It's a curse. Cardesia sent me. Here, she brewed this for you. Did you say Cardesia? Oh, finally. I can say goodbye to this cursed life. You don't know how relieved I am. Just hush and drink it down. Please, can you tip it toward my mouth so I might have a sip? The goddess is waiting for me. What do you mean? Never mind that. Please, I just need a little taste. I've been waiting so long for this. <coughs> what? Why am I still alive? Is this not poison? Poison? No, it's medicine. She didn't tell you anything, did she? Cardesia has felt nothing but hatred toward me all these years. And why wouldn't she? I killed the love of her life. So I told her, if she ever wanted to have her revenge, all she would need to do is to conjure up some poisonous brew and hand it to me. When you approached me with the concoction, I thought it was finally my time to die. If taste could kill, I'd be dead in a second. But this poison has no effect on me. She must be losing her touch. Why are you so convinced that she was trying to poison you? Maybe the medicine is what she said it was, something to lift the curse from you. Nope, no way. I've lived a long, long life. There's no way Cardesia would help me see more days. Not after what I did to her. Or perhaps her plan isn't to kill me, but to keep me alive so I can live with the guilt of my deeds. What do you think? How would I know? All I can say is this. After taking her medicine, you're looking less pale. You seem to be breathing a lot easier, and your pain has gone. Am I wrong? Huh? Ah. Well, now that you mention it, 
Oh, I wish I knew what was going on inside her head. Why would she forgive me? I killed someone she loved. I thought... It, I, I thought that drinking this concoction would put us both out of our misery. It was supposed to kill me and bring her peace, knowing she had avenged his death. If you really want to die, no one's stopping you. But you're still here, which would suggest to me there must have been a reason for you to keep going. You've spent years with this burden of a curse. It must have been harder to live than die, but you did choose life. Maybe you were hoping Cardesia would try to kill you, that way you'd escape the pain. But not only that, you'd be free of your guilt, and that would be the only way that she could forgive you. But things have changed. She let you live with the pain, but now she's saved you. I think that means she's letting go of the past. That's not possible! How could she? Oh, what have I done? Cardesia, my old friend, will you ever be able to forgive me? I beg of you. What are these? Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps I can assist you here. Y you followed me? Prompted by idle curiosity. Does this writing interest you? Allow me to... Hark now, hear the words. Heaven's path is the way of prayer. Bow low and worship their goddess. Wings borne on sacred air. There is more, but the letters are worn away. That's enough. Wings borne on sacred air. I think I have that covered, and something tells me I know where this Heaven's path is. This looks like a relic from ancient times. I wonder if it's something to do with the Grail of Valhalla. <gasps> Another fragment. It looks like the others. I should keep searching. They might be clues to tracking down the Grail. just broken shards, but I'd better collect everything. I've got a nice collection of shards, but I'm no closer to the Grail. Maybe I should show these to the Professor and see what he thinks. Yes. Yes! I believe you have succeeded at last. You have found the Grail of Valhalla. I have? All I found were these broken shards. Exactly! The shards scattered along Heaven's Path are themselves the remains of the Sacred Grail. All that remains now is for me to restore the treasure to what it once was. There, the Grail of Valhalla. Here, it belongs to you. Oh, finally, I have achieved what I set out to do. My real objective was to find the true vessel. The true vessel? I understand now. The Grail of Valhalla is said to be filled with the divine grace of the goddess herself. But it is not a man-made object. It is a living thing. The person who has inherited the goddess's grace. You see now, don't you? Just as I am the safekeeper of the scriptures, the vessel that keeps the sacred wisdom safe. You, who can navigate Heaven's Path, are the vessel that contains the Etro Benediction. You are the true Grail of Valhalla. Thank you. You have shown me the truth. The truth that I devoted my life to finding. Me? 
A vessel for the grace of a goddess? No, it doesn't make any sense. No, it can't be. Even if my heart was big enough for such a thing, I don't feel anything there. If I am a vessel, I am an empty one. My work is not done yet, rest assured. I hear you got the medicine to Taleb in time. Yes, but what's this about you trying to poison him? Oh, he told you about that. Uh, let me explain everything from the beginning. I've known Taleb since we were kids. We called ourselves the Three Musketeers, and we were inseparable. One and one makes two. Who was the third? Someone very special, Taleb's best friend, and the boy I eventually fell in love with. Sadly, the Three Musketeers didn't last very long after that. When Taleb found out about us, he was so hurt. Much more than I thought he'd be. Oh, Taleb killed him, didn't he? Yes, in a fit of rage or grief. I lost the love of my life, and shortly after, Taleb became cursed with a disease. Over time, it caught up with me, too. <coughs> it's hard to believe we were all such great friends. I don't know what to say. It's all right, really. I'm okay now. Things have been going well since then. To prove my point, I got to meet your beautiful angel, didn't I? What shall I do? What shall I do? Having some trouble? Trouble? I'd say. Some of my flock has fled. They've never done this before. What set them off? And of all the times for it to happen, a disaster, I say. Let me get this straight. It's my fault your sheep ran off, and so it's my job to bring them back? Well, I realize you meant no harm, of course, but yes, if you're volunteering, please bring my sheep back. Well, what do they look like? Three in total, and you'll know them when you see them. They were raised on my own patented formula and grow much larger than normal sheep. It will be a simple matter to give them a scare and drive them back home where they belong. Do this for me and I will be most grateful, and I will offer you a special reward as thanks. I'll look forward to it. You should, because it will be in the form of my world-famous fuzzy sheep milk. It's no ordinary milk, let me tell you. Packed with nutrients, creamy and delightful it is. And with three sheep, there'll be a lot of it. So, is this what you need? Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Cole. Shh, I told you. No one's supposed to know I'm alive. Oh, mon dieu. Pardonnez-moi. I'm so sorry. Ah! What are you... We meet again, Cole of Canopus Farms. Well, you found me out. So, it was you all along. I'm sorry, young lady. I didn't mean to make you part of the... deception. Tell me, when poor Sarala read my letter, did she shed a tear for her father? She did more than that. <sighs> I suppose she was inconsolable. She's still just a child. She lost her mother when she was too young. For a long time, it's just been the two of us. And that's the whole problem, see? She's 
grown too dependent on me. Always needing me to look after her. She's got to learn how to stand on her own two feet. I can't look after her forever. Kids have to strike out on their own eventually. She's a skilled farmer, and she's done wonders with that field. I know she can make it on her own, but she doesn't believe she can. I thought the best thing for her would be if I just disappeared. Faked my death and left her life for good. A nice clean break. For who? Huh? You say it's for your daughter's sake, but it's not just about her now, is it? Or will you tell me I'm wrong? <sighs> no, I cannot tell you that. Yes, I have another reason. I've wanted to leave the village for a long time now. I have to go on a journey, you see, to find my wife. Gone these many years. Your wife? And Sarala's mother? Yep. She disappeared years ago. Most folk have given up on her, and figure she must be dead by now. She's gone, Cole, they tell me. They try to convince me to let her go. As if I could. I know she's alive. Somewhere out there. Hope springs eternal. You mocking me? You think I'm wrong? I've lost family too. My younger sister. Every hour I pray to see her again. Then you understand how I feel. Yes, and I think Sarala will as well. If you explain to her why you have to go, she'll give you her blessing. You don't need to fake your death. Why make her grieve anymore? I don't want to hurt her. But you're wrong. She'd refuse to let me go. It's better this way. It's what she needs. I mean, look at me. It wasn't until my father passed that I learned to fend for myself. I still miss him, though. He was a stubborn bastard, no doubt about it. But by God, he knew about growing veggies. I relied on him for everything, right up until the day he died. Now, I've got to go. You have to promise me to keep this a secret. Don't you blab to Sarala. I've got a long journey ahead of me, and I need to pack my saddlebags. A stubborn bastard? Someone who is an expert at growing vegetables? Hmm, I wonder if he really is dead. That description sounds a lot like the Tantal Greens farmer. That's the last of them. On behalf of my sheep, I thank you. As promised, I present you with my sheep milk, the likes of which you won't find anywhere else. Just have to milk them. Hang on. There you go. Go on, take it. It's all for you. I tell you, if you hadn't found them, it would have been years of research down the drain. Okay, so you're a scientist then, not just a sheep farmer? Yes, exactly. Sheep's milk. That's my specialty. I carefully selected wild specimens and bred them for generations. I fed them a special formula I've refined over the decades, caring for them night and day. At long last, I had the fine creamy milk I sought. And now I have the inestimable honor presenting the fruit of my labor to you, the one chosen by the Angel of Valhalla. Chosen by the Angel, huh? So, what makes you think that's me? Oh, I can put two and two together easily enough. The reports of a white chocobo, the growing tide of chaos and monsters. All are clear signs that the end of the world is upon us. Not only that, amidst all the portents, I hear rumors of a young woman warrior with rose-colored hair. A description that matches that of the white chocobo's master in some of the tales. And just as I was pondering that, you show up. Why, it had to be destiny! It could be a lot of things, but you believe what you want. Oh, I will! I have long known that the milk I made here would change the fate of the world. You are the one chosen by the angel. You change the world with every encounter, with every decision. Our meeting here was no accident. To the northwest lies the village of Yod, where chocobos and humans live together. Welcome. May I help you?
What is this? Incroyable! Never did I think anyone would be able to find these ingredients. I shall pour my art and my soul into crafting this dish. I shall return. It is ready. I have made it at last. The legendary dish, the Nora Special. Nora Special? Somehow, that sounds familiar. <laughs> I doubt that, mademoiselle. It is a name that only a select few elite chefs are familiar with. It is a dish no longer served, a legendary recipe that was almost lost to the mists of time. A dish last sampled 1,000 years ago, or so the stories say. For something that's so legendary, there's not much to it. It's not all that fancy or complicated. But at the same time, it smells great, like good home cooking. Vraiment. At the time, it is a reassuring pleasure. It evokes sun-dappled afternoons on the seashore. A masterpiece of subtlety. It has been passed down to me over a thousand years. From one generation of chefs to the next, the recipe copied a hundred times. Until it came to me, from my master. To make this dish is the greatest honor a chef can know. Somewhere my master is watching, and is proud. Please, you must have this, as a token of my eternal gratitude. The Nora Special. It reminds me of a place near the water, of cool breezes, the waves lapping on the shore. I still remember Sarah. How could I forget? It was our hometown, the place we grew up, Bodom. You always used to order this at that cafe you loved. You'd make me get it too. Even now, a thousand years later, something of that time has survived. I have something important I want to ask you. It's about Cole from Canopus Farms. What? Cole, you say? Yeah. What did that sorry excuse do now? He's dead. What? That can't be. Are you sure? Why would the goddess take him before me? That son of mine. Yeah, he never knew how to do anything right. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. You're Cole's father, are you not? Which also makes you Sarala's grandfather. Huh? What? No, no. Cole's father passed away a long, long time ago. Cole's a bad liar. And now, I know where he gets it from. Long ago, you disappeared out of Cole's life by faking your death. And now, he's doing the same. Your son is planning to leave the village, for good. Sarala will be all on her own. So, he's not dead? That little... picking up and leaving his only daughter to fend for herself? Doesn't he know how much that'll hurt poor Sarala? I'd like to wring his neck! Look who's talking. Isn't Cole just following in your footsteps? It's what you did to him. Well, yeah, but it's different with us. It's not the same thing. I did it so my son could grow into a man. Listen to me, young lady. People don't age in this world, and death is rare. Parents stay parents. Kids stay kids. And that dependency, it never changes. That's why kids never learn to fend for themselves. They always have their parents to rely on. <sighs> Even a grown man like Cole. So you see, that's why I faked my own death. It was all for his own good, so he could learn to stand on his own two feet. Right. You say you did it for his own good. And I suppose you believe that. But now, are you gonna let Cole do the same thing? You've been watching over them for years now, keeping your secret. But it's time to step in. What about Sarala? She's already lost her mother, her grandfather, and now she's about to lose her father. She's got no one left. I don't want her to be sad. It breaks my heart seeing her unhappy. You're right. I have to fix this. Maybe I can talk to the two of them, and we can start over as a family. It's worth a try. I have a plan. Would you lend me a hand? I'll talk to Cole and lure him to a certain place. Will you talk to Sarala? and bring her there? Oh, but please don't tell her I'm the one setting this up. 
She may not come if she knew. Yes, I can do that. Where should we meet you? Chef Arius' restaurant. Now go to Canopus Farms and talk to Sorala. Please get her to come. You'll have to go through me. You hear? Sorala, do you have a minute? Yes, I do. What is it? There's someone who wants to meet you. It's the man who told me about your father. He was with him at the end. <gasps> you mean you found someone who talked to father before he passed? Something like that. What do you say? Okay, where should I meet them? Do you know Chef Arius' restaurant? He'll be there. I do! It's that little place in Arius' village, right? Bonjour. I have heard all about you from Cole's father. Please, come in. Your timing is perfect. The other three members of Mademoiselle's party arrived moments ago. Sorala. Father? You're... you're alive! Yes. And I'd like to explain why. I couldn't just abandon you. You deserve to know the whole story. Sarala, let me explain. Who are you? Have you forgotten me? I suppose I... I don't blame you. I'm Cole's father. Your grandfather. I know. They told you I was dead. Wait, what's going on? This may be hard to conceive, but I faked my death. I wanted Cole to grow up and learn to do things on his own. That's why I staged the whole thing, and kept it up all these years. And now your father wants to go off on his own and leave you behind. For both your sakes. But unlike me, he wants to do it the right way. He wants you to grant him your blessing before he departs. I'm so sorry, Sarawa. I wanted to tell you, but I just couldn't. I'm going on a journey. I have to do it. To find your mother. Oh, I just knew it. I knew you hadn't given up on mother, even after all the time that's passed. Why don't you all have a seat? You can continue talking inside the restaurant. him for years. She knows he's torn. He wants to take care of his daughter, but also he's consumed by the need to find his wife. He won't be gone forever. One way or another, they'll see each other again. She knows that. When they finally reunite, she'll be with her father and her mother once again. profile stories. I'm investigating a story for a friend. Do you know anything about a man named Renolf? Renolf? Yes, I think I do. Yes, the poor man's wife and daughter were brutally murdered over some business dispute. Happened quite a while ago. He lost everyone he loved in the blink of an eye. What a tragedy. That's some memory you have. This happened centuries ago. My boss put me in charge of that story. It's one that's hard to forget. That's lucky for us. Renolf himself asked me to look into the case so he can know the truth. Do you think you can help? 
Actually, I think I might be able to do just that. I can hardly refuse any favors from you now, can I? Except, I wonder if you wouldn't mind doing something for me in exchange. Nothing too time-consuming. You already owe me. Just to hear me out, please. You're helping all kinds of people, aren't you? Would you keep doing that, but when you're done, come tell me their stories. Just their stories? Are you sure that's all you want from me? Yes, I want to write something that will inspire people and lift their spirits. What better subject than you? I've done what you asked. I knew you could do it. That's great news for everyone. You'll be an inspiration to my readers. This will make a fantastic article. I'm not one to preach morality, but doesn't that violate some sort of reporter ethics? Writing stories that you helped create? The job of a reporter is to follow the truth, and that's what I'm doing. But if we're being completely honest, the real reason I asked for that favor isn't for a story. My real purpose was to observe you and watch you in action. What do you mean? Why me? I know who you are now. You help people, and in doing so, you save their souls. That's the duty you've been assigned by you-know-who upstairs. You are the savior, aren't you? Huh. You knew who I was all along. <laughs> Let's just say I had a hunch. But don't worry. Your secret will be safe with me. I won't tell anyone. Oh, by the way, I looked into Renolf's past. I found something that might be helpful. But the case was cold for a long time. But it turns out they did find a suspect in the end. So, was he arrested? I don't know if this is good news or not, but... The person in question appears to have passed away some time ago. Once the authorities saw the death certificate, they stopped the investigation. You're right. I don't know if that's good or bad news. So who was the person behind this? Some lowlife that was part of a criminal organization, specialized in petty crime. The order had been on his trail for a while. But he was a wily little rat, managed to stay one step ahead. He went through aliases, but uh, the one on the death certificate was Reddick. Reddick? I met someone with the same name in the Warren. He said he'd been in hiding for a long time. Could it be the same man? Is it possible he's still alive? But there was a death certificate and everything. He mentioned that he was dead in the eyes of the law. And he also knew where Renolf's journal was. Do you think he managed to fake his own death by forging the document to escape the Order's scrutiny? I suppose that could be possible. Then it looks like the case has been solved. We found our man. I'll go through the records again, in case we miss something. It was Reddick, the man in the Warren with no name. Are you gonna tell Renolf about this? If it really was Reddick, there's something I want to ask him first. Let's go to the Warren and see if he'll talk. Go ahead and board the train. Here for the train? Already slain the ultimate beast. You have done well, Savior. With this act, you have accomplished every task we set before you. Now you are free. I release you from the spell. Great. Now that I've got my free will back, why don't you tell me what this has been about? Why send me on all those errands? As members of the society, we are privy to centuries of alchemic lore. This knowledge gives us access to the greatest of powers. It is our duty to protect the common folk from threats such as monsters. The alchemic arts are too subtle a weapon to defeat beasts. So you got me to kill monsters because they were a threat to the civilians, is that it? It wasn't for your own gain? No. The alchemic arts are an ancient endeavor, the pursuit of ultimate truth. It is a truly selfless act. We enlisted your aid to bring peace to the citizens of this city. 
Now we have released you from the spell. You can continue your sacred mission. Go and serve your almighty god. Maybe they did cast a spell. I did exactly what they wanted, every step of the way. Who's to say it wasn't their doing? But you said yourself that you were just playing along. That you only did it to find out what their ultimate goal was. I thought I had the choice to stop whenever I wanted, but I didn't, did I? Maybe I could have stopped, or maybe I couldn't. Either way, it's a reminder of just how easy it is to manipulate others. I mean, when someone tells you not to do something, don't you ever get the urge to do the exact opposite? Who needs spells when all it takes is just a few words? Ironically, the freer people think they are, the more likely they are to be controlled. It's hard for anyone to really understand how people work. I mean, even if I think I have free will, I can't see into my heart to know for sure. Think about it. If someone else was making every choice for me, is there any way I could really know the truth? to take a look at my wares. Look what I found. Here you go. Make sure you don't lose it again, okay? <gasps> my doll! You really found it! Oh, thank you, thank you! My mom gave this to me. She's gone now. She got swallowed up by the chaos. It was 200 years ago, maybe longer. If this doll was safe and sound inside the chaos, that means my mom is okay too, right? It means she's watching over me from far away, right? People pray for the dead. They pray that even though their bodies are gone, their souls still exist. They pray they'll see their loved ones again. That little girl prays she'll reunite with her mother. The same way I pray that Sarah and I will be together again, someday. Hey, little missy. How about a drink? Looks like you've already had enough for both of us. <laughs> Not by half. I'm just barely getting started here. You want to know why? Ask my dearly departed fiance. She left me standing there like a fool at the altar. Do you really blame her? Who wants to marry a drunkard? You got it all wrong, honey. I started drinking after she left me. Everything has gone downhill since then. You probably won't believe me when I tell you, but I used to command a whole legion of the Order's finest men. Those days, I was on top of the world. Nothing could bring me down. Then why did your fiancé leave you? You must have some idea. Not even the foggiest. Me and Filiana. We were so in love. Or so I thought. Then she disappeared and never came back. She disappeared out of the blue? Are you sure something didn't happen to her? You did look for her, didn't you? Of course I did. From the palace in Yuznan to the edge of the wildlands. I searched for decades, but I never even heard a whisper of Filiana. <laughs> and when I described her, no one had ever even seen her pass through. My Filiana was a looker. No one could have forgotten seeing her. We were the happiest two people could be. But then, I crashed down from heaven to hell. There's no salvation to be found in this world. No God or Savior to deliver us. And if there's no salvation, then there's no hope. 
Can you honestly tell me that I'm wrong? Show me. Show me where there's any hope in this place. What? You're gonna find my Filiano for me and prove me wrong? I'd be willing to at least try. If there's still hope in this world, it has to be found. You have to look for it. Ha! <laughs> You're a tough chick with a good heart. Thanks for offering. That's good enough for me. I said I was willing to try, and I meant it. Where was the last place you saw what was certainly your better half? You're actually going to go find her? Filiana and I both lived in Yusnan back in those days. She was a fantastic cook. Her skills got her a job at a swanky restaurant where all the foodies went. Did you check out the restaurants in Yusnan? It's possible she's working in one. Oh, you don't get how desperate I was back then. I checked every lead I could get my hands on, but I found nothing. I'll go back and check them again. What? You will? You would do that for a stranger? I, I don't know what to say. Here, take this with you. Matching rings. Seeing it just reminds me of her, but I don't have the courage to throw it away. you're doing accosting strangers like that. <coughs> I'm sorry. Forgive him. My son mistook you for our dear Miss Micah. It must have been the hair. Hers was exactly the same color. Right. Easy mistake to make. Miss Micah is beloved by our god Benevelza. What with the rose-colored hair? Some even speculate that she could be the chosen one. The savior. That's because Micah heard the voice of God. She told me. The savior with rose-colored hair, huh? Yes. Dear Miss Micah. <laughs> she is a wonderful young woman. Always coming to the aid of the sick and ailing, like myself. We've been waiting ages for her next visit. I thought you were her. Were you expecting her to come again soon? Uh-huh, and guess what else? She even promised us she would bring a phantom rose for us next time she came. It's a crimson-colored flower, very similar to a rose. But while everyone knows of it, no one's ever actually seen one. They're said to never wither or die. They maintain their life and beauty forever. A flower that never dies. It's no wonder no one's ever found one. <laughs> You're not easily fooled, are you? Yes, the Phantom Rose is nothing more than a fairy tale told to children. But this is what Micah said when she left. I'll bring you the legendary flower that no one believes can be found. So don't you give up on hope. Keep living. As you can see, I don't have much time left. But when she told me to go on living, I wanted to hold on, just so I wouldn't let her down. Fake Savior Lady! If you see the real Micah around, tell her that she better not forget her promise to me, okay? Ulrich, who taught you it was okay to be rude to others? Sure, kid. I'll tell her not to forget about your flower. Thanks. You're all right for a fake. Now that I have Renolf's journal, I know who was behind the murders of his wife and child. You've been running ever since. You even faked your own death. I knew someone would make me. You got me. So you know everything. Yeah, I did it. I killed his family. I took the lives of his beautiful wife and daughter. All for a little money. The one who hired me had a rival business, and he wanted Renolf out of the game. He's long gone, though passed away some time ago. After you took care of business for this man, did you also steal the journal? Again, that was me. Years after the incident, something happened to Renolf. 
one day he just seemed to forget the whole thing ever happened. I thought it was a lucky break on my part. I figured it was the best thing for all of us. But why didn't you just dispose of it? It would have been easier than giving it to someone for safekeeping. And if it links you to the crime, why help me find it? Guilt. I was too much of a coward to turn myself in. But I think I was waiting for someone to figure it out. I wanted this day to come. I'm tired of running. Turn me in, arrest me, do what you want. It's not up to me to decide your punishment. Not even the order. I'd say it's up to Renolf, wouldn't you? So be it. I'll be right here waiting for retribution. Hey, I know you don't owe me anything. But do me a favor, will you? Don't tell my son about this, okay? That's all I ask. Who's your son? Name's Marlon. He's my stepson. A good kid. He's nothing like me. Got his own business and everything. Marlon? He's not a baker by any chance, is he? You know him? Even though I'm not his real father, he sends me money on a regular basis. You know, to get by. He has a good heart. I couldn't ask for a better son. I really don't deserve a boy like him. Lay. Isn't Marlin the boy Renolf is so fond of? The one who bakes him those muffins that he loves so much? This does complicate things, but Renolf insisted he wants to know the truth, and that's what I'm gonna give him. Really? Even though something like this could ruin their friendship? Do you think Renolf's prepared for that, after losing his family all over again? And the dead dooms is now arriving. Here for the train? It rains. That was once a man's name, but now it means nothing. His soul has dissolved into the swirl of chaos. I take his form as a convenience, but I'm no more than a puppet. All right, so who's pulling your strings, Bonavelsa? No, not God. I am the voice of many, of the countless multitude who call chaos home. I am the speaker for the dead. Tell me, Savior, do you know the ritual they call Soul Song? Vanille is planning to perform it at the Cathedral. She says it'll release the dead from their suffering. I guess that means you. Vanille has been misled. There is a truth she cannot see, a truth that lies within the Unseen Realm. What do you mean? What truth? You do not understand the role of Chaos. <laughs> the chaos will drown this world, but it's also the key to our humanity. When we die, we return to it, but only for a short time. When a man dies, his soul melts into the chaos, but the idea of it, of him, survives intact. And then he is reborn anew and returns to the living world. An unseen power exists in all of us. It's the chaos that we carry in our hearts. Our souls are made out of the chaos, which is why they return to it when we die. But they survive there, waiting for a new body, which means you could be reborn in the new world. If the Sacred One shows us the way, she is the only one who can tell us what to do. She has the power to guide us into the future where we can live again. She can do what I can't. Vanil can bring salvation to the dead. Yes, but she doesn't know what she is capable of. The Order has kept the truth from her. 
Why would they lie to her? They preach salvation. Only for the living. The soul song will destroy us and make you forget we ever existed. Murder on a grand scale. You want me to stop her, right? Yes. And then you must tell her what her real power is, so she can lead us to salvation. Is this what you all want? It is, but it is not God's will. If you answer our prayer, it will mean defying Benevelza. Those who try to defy the gods end up controlled by them and are destroyed in the end. Like Sid Reigns. I remember Reigns fought for humanity and he was killed for it, but the spirit that drove him to stand up to the tyranny of the gods didn't die. I kept it with me. Chaos is in all of us. It's the stuff our souls are made of, and it's the reason that the dead live on in our hearts and minds. Yes, the chaos unites humanity, a thread woven through all our lives, and it's a power God cannot see. Its potential is limitless, and that makes it more powerful than he is. But now you're gonna tell me that it's nearly impossible to tap into. Am I right? Yet it is possible. No one can control the chaos. If you want to make the power yours, you must have the help of those who are inside it. You know what needs to be done. You know whose soul you have to find. You mean Sarah? Are you saying I'll be able to reach her? You must. With the chaos, anything is possible. Find the invisible bonds that unite us across life and death. Do that, and you will have all the power you need. Hmm. Chaos. It was the key to defeating God. If I wanted to use it, I needed Sarah's help. But Sarah, how can I make you hear me? I reach out with every fiber of my being, but is it enough? Can I do more? If I throw myself into the abyss, if I cry out to you, will you hear me, Sarah? Will you answer? Hold the world aloft, give me another day. <sighs> How's life on the surface? Light, the end is almost here. One more day, and then the destruction of the world will be complete. Right. And there's no way I can delay it any longer. No. This is it. You can still carry out your mission as the Savior, but today is your last chance. Tomorrow in the Cathedral, Vanille will perform the Soul Song for the Order. The final rites. When the souls of the dead will be released from their torment and returned to oblivion. And when the clock strikes the hour, It'll mark the end of everything. It's an ending that not even God has the power to stop. Hope, tell me something. You said that the souls of the dead return to the chaos, right? If that's true, then that's where Sarah must be. Her soul is lost out there in the chaos somewhere. For God, the chaos is an unseen realm. He cannot see inside. And so it follows that he doesn't have the power to find her, as long as she is in the chaos. But he can do something else. He can make her anew. 
But then how can she be the real Sarah? The one I know? Well, don't you trust him? It's true that even with all his power, God cannot extract Sarah's soul from the chaos. But there is another place he might find it. He could take her soul from inside of you. How would... You're just making things up now. You always found it hard to trust people. What chance does God have? Look, I'm not saying you will. But if you do decide to turn against him, you should know that I'll always stand with you. You trust me, don't you? It just seems like the more I search, the further away I get from finding her. I've encountered more than a few ghosts from the past now, talked to souls from the chaos even, but I'm still no closer to finding Sarah, not even a hint. I don't know, but perhaps you've done everything you can. Maybe you could have found her already, but something is keeping her from talking to you. Like she doesn't want to see me? Is that what you're saying? Of course I don't think that's the case. But it's possible. Perhaps it's because you're too close to each other. You mean she's out there and can talk to other people, but not me. Tell you what, why don't you go out there and look for her in my place? I'd like to help, Light, but I can't leave the Ark. How about this? If I happen to die before you do, for whatever reason, I'll make you a promise. I'll try to find her in the chaos, and when I do, I'll find some way for you two to be together again.